My name is uh, Jordi Griera. I was born in Barcelona and I am currently the president of the INEVAL Foundation, which is a foundation devoted to the spread of human values in the economic world. It was 1995 when I decided to uh, embark on a human values project for the community, for the commons. Uh, because we were a, a group of friends and we were seeing that the, uh, the end of the century was fast approaching and economy was still the same. Nothing had changed. And we saw the euro at that time as a big problem. In fact, we wrote uh, articles in Catalan newspapers warning that 10 years after uh, the start of the Europe, the, on, the in onset of the euro, there would be very big problems in European economy, especially in the countries that had lower productivity than Germany's. It was very easy to guess because until that moment, Spain had survived through uh, this, this, com this competitive disadvantage. Spain had surmounted it through devaluation. And not being able to devaluate, not having implemented any fiscal uh, policy throughout Europe, a single policy, necessarily uh, the problems would arise, and as they have. And the time was not something that we guessed just out of, uh, of the blue. It was because we calculated the difference of productivity and multiplied until we thought uh, by number of years until we thought it would be unsustainable. Th that came uh, more or less 10 years. So there have been financial uh, problems and chaos all over the world, but this was an announced failure. Spain could only join the Europe when enough uh, guarantees would have been in place that or mechanisms to surmount this different differential in productivity. And they were not. Uh, our government of that time simply handed over Spanish financial sovereignty to the ECB with no counterparts. With this was suicide. And I think for the, the, the whole of Southern Europe it was the same. Uh, it, it was a mistake. It was just, you know, the, the eagerness of being united or I don't know what or some uh, thinking that somehow a miracle would appear that would solve problems would be solved just like that. And problems get only solved when you put the means to, for solving them. Uh, automatic solving is something very rare. You cannot reckon upon it. Um, this coiling back of the economy, I don't think it's necessary because people forget that the, the natural resources are limited and they, they are getting exhausted. But there is one natural resource which is inexhaustible, which is man's ingenuity. Man and woman, of course, <laughs> man at large, eh? ingenuity. So we are going to continue to devise new ways and probably the economy can still grow. What is not going to grow is the requirement for manpower. Because precisely this ingenuity causes automation to go on and on and up and up. And that means decreasing labor time. The unfair thing there is that all the savings of this productivity are only for a few guys who own the capital. Why? Why? A factory, this, uh, my friend, Shalom used to say that a factory is using uh, many wheels for the production. Did, are they paying royalty for the wheels to the Chinese? <laughs> are they paying the community for using uh, the road that their trucks are running on? No, they're paying maybe petty taxes, maybe uh, if, it's, uh, if it's a tall road, of course, they pay something. But normally, they don't pay anything. Are they paying parents for so many years of uh, elevating and educating 
the people that are working at the factory. No, they're just paying by the hour. What about the years of creating that worker out of nothing? <laughs> which is, belongs to parents, which belongs to society, training, you know, all that. Companies are not paying for any of these things. Companies are paying only for very little, very little of what they are actually receiving. So it's, it's unfair. It is not because they are wicked, it's the system which is mistaken. <laughs>